Again, try not to drop it in the depths of the truck engine. Like that. Wonderful. Hello YouTubes. Now, I know I promised I was going to be working on the low cost project next, but I cannot move on with that until I at least diagnose what's wrong with the truck. I've been doing some research over the last four or five days, both on just Google and YouTube, and it's all pointing to one fairly expensive repair, but there is one more fairly inobtrusive test I can do before we move on to doom and gloom. Let me show you. As you probably know by now, this is my 2010 Dodge Ram 1500 with the 5.7 Hemi, 300,000 kilometers. The faults I am getting, engine fault code P0305 and also multi-cylinder misfire. The 305 is specifically cylinder 5 misfire. I have swapped the spark plugs, I have swapped the coil pack with a brand new coil pack. Checked all the wires, checked all the grounds. I'm still getting the same recurring code of P0305. It's very specific to Sunder 5. So the one thing I have not done yet, which is what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to swap injectors from Sunder 5 to Sunder 1 because it's going to be easy enough to replace Sunder 1 injector. Sunder 5 probably not quite as easy because it's right underneath the brake booster. So if that still doesn't change the code to 301 then we're on to something fairly major to get these injectors out then i will need to remove some of the fuel rail this is the driver's side the fuel rail goes from there up to the back i will need to disconnect the fuel line coming in holding this in place are two 10 mil bolts that one there and that one there so obviously I need to disconnect all the plugs going into the fuel rail for the injectors or going into the injectors. Uh, I did remove this breather hose at the moment. Not remove, just put it at the side, give me a bit more room. And once those bolts are out, I can lift the whole thing up. Now the injectors are attached to the underside of this bar. So when I lift this out, all the injectors are still going to be attached. They shouldn't leak at this point because the injectors only open when they are signaled to do so. But I will go and get a rag. Now, the other thing I need to do, I want to take the fuel pump fuse out, which is this one down here on this particular age of RAM. I'll take that fuse out, crank it over a couple of times just to depressurize the fuel system. Uh, I will then disconnect the battery. Obviously, I don't want sparks and fuel. And then we can get on with removing that fuel rail. Okay, fuel pump fuse now removed. Let's crank over a couple of times. I'm expecting it to run for like five seconds. Even better, it doesn't run at all. So the fuel pump is obviously doing its job, or not doing its job. Doing not its job, you get the idea. Okay, let's get that battery disconnected and then we can remove that fuel rail. First thing I need to do is remove that safety clip. Just a sort of emergency if your seal breaks, it doesn't send the pipe shooting off in all directions. Now, as much as I used this tool before, I have ground it down just a little bit because the space to get in there is really tight. I've only taken like a mil off and you'll notice that the sizes on either side of that are a bit different. So I'm going to put the longer side round first and hopefully wiggle the shorter side in. Like so. So I'm going to put the rag underneath because 
I don't know how much fuel is going to come out of this. Hopefully not a lot. Squeeze the tool up. Yeah. Okay, so not a lot of fuel coming out, but enough to make a stink. Okay, while we're in here, I'm going to take those little 10 mil bolts out. There's one there, one there. Of course, my extension's too long. Back in a sec. Okay, that should be better. And the reason I'm puffing and panting, that's partly because I'm out of shape, but also because I'm stretched away over the front of the engine, as you can imagine. These aren't mega tight, but of course, <laughs> do not drop these. You don't want to go fishing at the back of your engine. One. Oh, it's quite a, it's quite a aggressive thread. I guess it's going into plastic. Another reason you wouldn't want to over tighten these things. Number two. Okay, so our fuel rail will now come out with the injectors, but I might have to move you while I wiggle this. The only thing holding it in place at the moment is the O-rings at the bottom of the injectors going into the intake. So just take your time. They will come out eventually, but don't break them for goodness sake. Okay, I'll see you top side. Or front side. Right, I did have to wiggle a fair bit to get these out. But they're out now. So, here we can see there's a clip up here that holds these in place. Now, I don't think you have to take them all the way out. They're pretty sharp, so I'll probably use a pair of pliers. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of hoping that this is the problem. So I'll just swap that one with that one. I know I said I'd swap it with number one, but it doesn't make any difference. Obviously, make sure your O-rings are still intact. And still on this side and not stuck down in the engine somewhere. Okay, let me get a pair of pliers, see if I can remove that one. Actually, a screwdriver might just do the job. This is silly. Let's just take the clip off, shall we? Slides out that way, I think. Again, try not to drop it in the depths of the truck engine. Like that. Wonderful. Anyway, let's take this out while we're here, and then I'll go fishing. Wow, this is tight. Oh, where's my rag when I need it? All types of fail going on today. I let that drain. Well, that was an epic fishing trip. Let me show you where I eventually found it. Obviously, never easy to find these things, but it was, or, and still is. Uh, I've lost it again. Oh, dear. oh yeah. You see it? Centre of the screen. Nice and easy to get to. Hopefully my magnetic screwdriver or my magnetic pickup thing will do the job, hopefully. Okay. 
on with the show. Right, I've moved my fuel rail away from the depths of the engine to make this a, a bit easier. So there's the clip I need to remove. Try not to drop it this time. Oh, there must be an easier way to get these clips off. And that could be a technique. Rotate it round so that you can lever against the fuel rail with the screwdriver that should come out. Like so. Okay, let's get this one out. This time I'll probably I'll probably uh, lose the o-ring. I know it came out. Right, I'm just going to put it straight into the, the other one so that I don't mix them up. Although I need to put the clip back on. Right, clip goes back on that way. I'm going to do it away from the truck so I don't flip it into the engine bay. God, there's just nothing to lean on over here. Right, clip back on. Putting it into number five. It goes on much easier than it comes off. Let me throw number five into number three. Number five into number three. Or when I say number five, I mean that's where I took this injector from. So, best case scenario, when I reinstall all this, I'll be looking for a P. 0303 error code instead of 305 and then I know it's injector. If it still comes up 0305 <laughs> then we move on to the next stage. Right, let me just reassemble that. It's the opposite of assembly, eh, disassembly. And then we'll go to the next step. Well, reinstall so much quicker than disassembly. It took me about three minutes to put all that together. Just get the fuse to go back in. And then we will go inside, put the ignition on, clear the error code from before. Otherwise, it's going to go a 305 and a 303 if it's going to do that. And obviously, I need to prime the, the fuel pump as well. So let me get the fuse in, then we'll go inside the truck. I'm just going to use my basic scan tool for this. I don't need my big fancy scan tool because this picks up the code, no problem. I only use the big scan tool for all the other bits and bobs. Right, plug that in. God, you'd think I'd know where it was by now. Right, ignition on. So this will do two things. It'll It'll put the ignition on obviously, but it'll also prime the fuel pump. The ignition is on. Let's read. And it should still have the codes from before. Read codes. No codes are stored in the module. Oh, I must have cleared it before the last time. Ugh. Right, anyway. Right, I'm going to prime it a few times and then we'll go back into this and see what code we get. Right. Just switching it off and then back onto the ignition on should prime it. I'll do that about three times just to make sure there's plenty of fuel in there. Once more for luck. Right, let's go for start. While we're waiting for it to throw that code, I just want to show you, or let you hear, the engine sounds really nice and smooth, right? Any clicking you hear is just the injectors. The reason I point this out is the next stage of testing involves 
a fairly potentially horrible repair and cost but as I say I'll get to that in a minute after I check the codes and it sounds absolutely fine I might actually have to drive it to trigger this code still no code let's give it a rev Right, there's the code, and now it's running rough. So it's only triggering that code and going into this limp home once it gets over 2000 RPM. Right, let's check the code. Read codes. P0300. Random multiple cylinder misfire detected. Any more codes? No, that's the only code. Well, that doesn't help me at all. So I wanted one of two results, either I wanted the P0305 to change to P0303 because I swapped injectors or I wanted it to remain P0305 and then I would move on to the more severe scenario. I've got neither, I've got multiple cylinder misfire so let me explain. You've probably heard of the, the Hemi tick where the lifter wears down and then it wears down the cam and you have to replace the cam and all the lifters. That's, that was the worst case scenario which I was kind of expecting if it stayed on the P0305 error code. But now that I don't even have that, I'm back to square one. I've done the crank sensor, I've done the cam sensor, I've checked all the wiring, I've swapped the spark plug, swapped the coil. Right, I cleared the code again, started it up, let it warm up a bit more this time and then when it triggered the code, wouldn't you know it, P0305 Cylinder 5 misfire detected, so you know what that means That means I need to take the driver's side rocker cover off disconnect the fuel, disconnect the ignition, turn it over and watch for the valves going up and down in cylinder 5 specifically if it doesn't go up as much as the other ones beside it then I know that the lifter's gone, cam's gone uh, bank account drained basically so I will be doing that test tomorrow I've run out of giving a for instance for today but I need to do that tomorrow joy, joy, wonderful if it fixes it, great because at the moment, as I said before, the truck's worthless unless it's running right. Okay, I'll update you tomorrow then, I guess, or the day after, to see if I can see if I can be bothered. I'm just I'm just done with this truck. I'm not done with it at all. I love the truck, but I have to get it fixed. Right, enough of that. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the misery again, but I think we're getting closer to a final resolution to this little issue. Drive safe. See you later.